You're listening to Paint the Town Podcast with your hosts. LA Street Art Gallery resident artist, teacher, and founder of LA Street Art Gallery, James Chen of Paint the Town Podcast, episode 97. How you doing, bro? Good. 97, dude. Couple more. We're almost there, man. Hell yeah, we're almost there, man. We have a few surprise guests coming up, uh, but we're not going to tell the audience about it yet because we haven't pretty much lined up. It's a good problem to have, man. We have like a lot of guests coming up because uh, I, I know some podcasts that kind of struggle with guests and things like that, man. So we're very blessed. We, will never have, we, should, we should never have that problem. I mean, dude, there's so many people out there that, that, you know, do street art that have anything to do with the street art that, you know, uh, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't see get the recognition that actually. And that's kind of what this Plus, show there's so many people that we want to have back on again that we've already had on. That's so, true. Um, I, you know what though? Anyway, a lot of people uh, are just kind of like waiting for us to get back inside the studio actually too, man, which is kind of interesting because there's a few guests that are like, Oh no, we want to hang out with you guys in the studio. And I get it, man. Like, Dude, some of these Dude, yeah. are tough, man. It, you know what I mean? There's no, like, chemistry better than inside the fucking studio, kicking it. Like, you know, I feel the person's energy, like, right in front of my face, man. Like, that, that's the best. Yeah. You know? Trust me, man. I, I uh, you know, we do what we can uh, with what we have. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. you know, at but, least we get to see their artwork with this. We get to see their artwork a little bit more. Um, although it is like a, a, a crapshoot. Um Russian roulette with uh, <laughs> the whether, whether it's going to be a good connection or not. You, you never yeah, know. Yeah, ho- hopefully. Um, well, dude, let's get to uh, let's get to uh, one of our giveaways. Okay, um, yeah, we have a contest. I'm just going to bring it up real quick, actually, because um, we had a contest on our Instagram. Our buddy uh, uh, Eddie Donaldson basically we have Gorilla One, um, what our T-shirt giveaway, and then um, we're in the shirt right now. Nice. Um, Here we have is, T-shirt. Uh, Modeling this is an extra large. We have extra. Uh, we have like three extra large shirts that we're we're giving away. Um, I'm about six three, about one ninety or so, you know. So this is this is how it fits me, nice and uh, nice and comfortable. Man, this thing is is just the the material. It's like butter, man. Nice, nice. and smooth. Well done, Eddie. Um, so here's here's a uh, a list of the uh, the names. Uh, oh, you put in the uh, yeah. No, there. we did a little uh, just post basically saying uh, tag two art loving friends winner drawn on uh, August fourth, and that's today. So basically, we're gonna do it live on the air, man, so everybody knows uh, um, y- you know who the winner is basically. And uh, um, all right, so here's here's all the names right here. They're going into the uh, the hat. And, it's a uh, teach piece hat right there. Nice, I like that. Yeah, hold on a second. He's, uh, sliding the, the... these little bits of paper with all the names on it into a uh, trucker teach piece hat. Okay. Yeah. Ah, there it is. Okay. Got them all. All right. So. All right. You got a sound Drum effect roll. for me or something? There? <laughs> really? Yeah. All right, here we go. And the winner is. Let's see. <laughs> it's an interesting name. Can you read that? Shapes well placed. Yes. All right. All right. Let me check. Make sure this. Check, is check out their uh, look them up. Nice. Okay. This is a uh, graffiti guy. <laughs> And uh, out of Las Vegas, man. Congratulations. Shapes well placed, man. All right. Dude, Eddie, your shirt's going to Vegas, man. Awesome. And uh, so the uh, we're going to be – we're doing these giveaways basically because, you know, the, the government just can't get their shit together with the stimulus checks this go around. And um, – you know, and so unfortunately, some of the hardest working Americans are the ones who are suffering. Um, and so uh, we're doing giveaways. Since the government won't give it away, uh, James and I are giving it away. We figured now's a good time to, to do the giveaways. So, yeah, and also um, you're going to. Yep. Yeah. 
I'm uh, these little guys right here. Um, these are the peaceful pit bull uh, figurines. They're the 2.5 inch size. And then uh, on the back of this one, this one has Alicia. Um, she's one of the Black Lives Matters founder. Uh, each one of us signed by me. This one has Patrice. And uh, this one is uh, Opal. Um, and so these are the uh, three little resin uh, castings um, that I uh, casted and sanded down, signed them and everything. And so uh, later on tonight, and I'm named, gonna be right? drawing, yeah, I'm gonna be drawing three names instead of just one, there's gonna be three winners. So, uh, you know, people have up until midnight tonight to, to tag two people. That's all you gotta do is tag two people on my, um, on the feed there and uh, you're entered. And then, you know, tomorrow morning, I imagine sometime, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be up that, you know, uh, well, you know what? Yeah, I'll stay up till, till midnight. I'll do the drawing and then put the post up and then go to bed. How about that? Nice, nice dedication, man. I like that, man. Um, and then this, this little guy that I was showing at the beginning of the, of the uh, show, for those of you who are uh, listening, is um, this is a little French bulldog. Uh, and it's a um, double casting because the, uh, the bottom part and part of his ears is... Uh, dang, I like that. Like a black. And then his ears <clears throat> in the back are a, uh, a clear. And it's actually not a regular clear. It's actually kind of a little bit darker. It's a shaded clear. Um, and then it's signed on the back of it. It has a B, a BLM for Black Lives Matters. It says John Lewis, and uh, has my name and uh, the year there. So um, nice, that's going to be another one of the giveaways. Just uh, so we're on this right now, let me grab this right quick. This is going to be um, another one of the uh, giveaways. It's kind of an interesting one. Um, this is a print of the piece that I put out on the street of John Lewis. Yeah. Um, now, if you if you can see this, I think right there, that's uh, that's number one right there. That's the the first spray print that I did with this. I'm going to be uh, giving this one away. Now, the interesting thing is, um, I'm basically recycling. Okay, this paper on the back of it is Harvey Milk. Okay, this was right. from a, a run that um, I didn't really like how it turned out. Never got used for anything, um, and uh, it was actually a collaboration with. Uh, with uh, David Garcia um, was uh, Dream and Destroy. Um, his, that was his uh, crown, and this was the little cross that I made with his crown, and that was kind of like our collaboration thing. Um, nice, but these never got used for anything, so um, you got kind of like a, a double piece of artwork with that. Um, I like so that's that. Gonna be another one of the if you get tired of one side, you can just turn it around, basically. I'm, I'm going big on John Lewis here just because I was really bothered by the Axios um you know interview with trump where he was really disrespecting john lewis because he didn't go to his inaugural event and all this fucking bullshit um so uh fuck you don leave the donald to talk lewis. shit about somebody right after they died or if they're in the hospital or something like that you know what I mean? Just, I mean, yeah i mean dude i've i've been trying to you know um behave myself about the whole you know political thing and this that and the other but it's just it's that's it's just ridiculous okay that's all i feel you man no well it's good than... we have let's talk about our guest basically because i see him in the waiting room oh right dude i'm actually. stoked i'm stoked john john ennis is one of the most active uh guys you'll ever meet as far as um not only putting things in the streets he is one of the most provocative uh, pro most um prolific he's one of the most prolific street artists there is in the world Okay. That's and uh, yeah, me. definitely. And also, it's his second and time back. It's not so. big stuff. It's not like I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is because uh, he likes to keep a low profile about it and everything the way he does what he does. But let me just tell you, this dude gets it in every way possible from on the street to um, cyber graffiti. Like, there's all different types of graffiti, and this dude is just in on it all. And not only that, but he knows how to how to do things that are going to make a difference. You know what I mean? So I'm looking forward to him having some information for us and street artists for, you know, give us things to put up in the streets in the next between now and November. Like what, what we should be doing now to try to do the best thing that we can do to make a difference. He's a well-informed guy um, for sure. And dude, just to give you an idea, this is uh, one of his um, movies that he's made, Pay to Play. I'm actually in this. This is uh, one of his uh, books that he wrote. Um, that's actually my 
artwork on the cover right there. Um, this is another one that actually has Free Humanities uh, piece right there. But uh, and you know he's got another movie that he's put out, um, and he just did another documentary. So uh, he's going to. And he's going to tell us, us a little bit about that today. So. Yeah. Oh, the red shoes and dance the blues. Let's dance to the song. Yes. Look at this. Awesome. I love it, man. Can you hear us? Oh, he's connecting. He's connecting. You got us? Hold on, hold on. There we go. Now, Welcome, John. Here I am. Yes! <laughs> Love it. You know what, Teach? You. You're actually the guy with the worst mic today now, because John's a professional, man. <laughs> Fucking A. Look at that That's mic. Right. I've, got, I've got mic envy <clears throat> now. I've got some serious mic envy, you know? Um, I was just showing... Uh, Actually, just had this in my hand, uh, John, uh, showing oh, everybody um, one of the uh, one many, of many things awesome. that you've been working on. Um, so cool. Yeah, thing. there's some good. Uh, the DVD has good shorts on it, like your short, the teacher short. I know, like little side things you can play from the from the menu and everything. So that's, that's right. You know, that, that, um, dude, thank you. First DVD of all, thank you so much. Won't know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, for joining us again. Um, as Absolutely, a, you know, thanks for repeat, having me. Um, repeat guests, and um, we basically could have just kept going for hours and hours on the first, um, you know, episode. Uh, so, um, you know, getting just getting back into it right now. Um, you know, let's go with something that is current right now, which I just saw that you've done is uh, this new documentary. Tell me about it. Uh, this documentary, Fish in a Barrel, is about uh, how uh, the NRA took over our elections and how Russia took over the NRA. Wow. Man, let me just pull up the... How long uh, is it? It's a feature. So feature that's, film. Uh, that means it's either somewhere between... That means um, like 85 minutes probably 85 minutes 85 hour 25 minutes to people who sit through full things so yeah yeah um it's Dude, how, uh, how long have you been working on this about two years off and on but you know it's pretty striking how um, you know i i went to the march of march for our lives because a friend of mine uh camera guy who i've known for a long time from new york was like after Parkland, he was like, John, we got to do something, man. And he's like the least political guy. And so when he says something, I was like, wait, what? You? <laughs> and I think that might have been, that might have been like his first protest or something that we went to. He was blown away by it. I'm like, dude, I've been going to these, like, I don't know, like you go to concerts and sporting events. Like, I don't even know <laughs> what to tell you, man. So like, he was like curious why I was shooting a certain way or something. And then when he saw the footage, he was like, oh, wow, you can see so far. And so anyway, so I was like, Dude, I have, yeah, I've been doing this for decades. So, um, but fuck around with that footage. I just didn't know if I could do anything with it. You know, there was so much passion. There were so many good like signs. The art in the signs are so amazing, and uh, mm -hmm. and everybody was so articulate about what they what kind of reforms they wanted. And I was like, well, damn, I I feel like I should do something, but I don't know what exactly. So I I, I seriously would just edit that stuff and not know what I was going to do with it for a long time. Dude, that's like a painting medicine. or something like that for some of us. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Something that sits around you know you're going to do something with it. And thank God you did something with it. Now. Yeah. Well, and what's weird is, you know, because I have a writing background, but there's something about me writing with editing. And um, I'm just starting to look at this whole thing now. And I'm seriously like, dude, what, the, what is this? How did this fucking happen? Like, like there's something about putting stories and facts together where I'm like, don't you see? Isn't that fucking <laughs> ill? And then like... <laughs> And, and just like you, you get the wrong music and people are like, Ugh, you know, and it's like so gratifying to, to be able to do that stuff. And then like, I just turn around and I'm like, dude, who did all this? Like, who wrote all this stuff? Like, who did this research on like campaign finance laws in the Senate and like, uh, you know, these crazy like shell companies that the NRA uses. So they're so guilty of so much shit. It's only really worth going through all that stuff. If there's an end, if there's a real aim and if there's an achievable aim. 
and there is with this and, and that's their uh, the uh, NRA's tax exempt status is being investigated uh, already in multiple states and so uh, if the IRS can uh, you know hear enough from us and uh, you know this what I, my film is based on a Senate Finance Committee report so um, it's it's all like heavily detailed and, and uh, thoroughly you know heavily reported on, but no one's been able to sit through all the stuff at once. Especially the whole Russia thing, the Maria Butina with the fucking, especially because stuff was trickling out with that, and you're like, what is it? Was she sleep with everybody? Was she just like, was she really a gun enthusiast? Like, who is this person? You know? And so like, right, we gotta I mean, take a step back for one second. At her. We gotta take a step back for one second because from a person who we, may, you know. I'm completely unaware of this whole, uh, uh, That's fine. You, know, you know, NRA issue. So, uh, you know, I'm a dummy, right. man. So, so like I said, let's start from you know the beginning. What? I, I think a good point. I think it's, a good point. It's absolutely for the uninitiated. Exactly. A shell, uh, a shell company. Why don't you start with helping people to understand what a shell company is for the NRA and the Russians, how that works. Well, I have, I have the video, man. You want me to, you, I have the video you sent me. Uh, you want me to play that first, the trailer? Oh, yeah. Yeah, let, let's play the trailer point, dude. Yeah. and oh, then see, awesome. see if the uh, um, see, hopefully the sound will work. Otherwise, uh, I'll edit it back in later. But um, let me just right. uh, just kind of like maximize this. We'll make like we heard it perfectly, okay, John? That's right. Yeah. Well, hopefully, I, I down I down hell yeah, John. Right? <laughs> see, bro, we're all yeah, right? we're all like professional like getting people. into it like immediately, man. But I mean, oh, that's dude, awesome. <laughs> yeah. So you're saying that Russian money went into the NRA, which spent heavily on and coordinated with the Trump campaign in 2016? Yes, that is exactly right. Russian money went in. And frankly, I'm angry. I mean, this woman held herself out as a freedom fighter, and instead it's pretty clear that she's a scam artist uh, and a liar. The FBI is looking at uh, Russia as a potential source of NRA funds. In particular, there is a Russian banker named Alexander Torshin who may be the source of some of those funds. I shake my head and I go, what the heck is going wrong in our country? where the guy was in Mandalay. I mean, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Wow, man. Great editing, man. God almighty. Jesus. Like, excellent hey, film. Excellent. And here's the oh, art, man. man. You want to, before we get into the topic real quick, I mean, he also sent me this uh, beautiful cover, yeah. man. It, oh, uh, that's awesome. Who did this art for you, man? That's right. Uh, just... Yeah, I was happy to uh, be able to share this on you guys, with you guys first. Uh, the uh, the artwork is by Ralph Steadman, who's known oh, wow. for his collaborations with Hunter S. Thompson. Yes, yeah. that's who. Um, dude, I that's know that who with, uh, wow, dude, that's who I was uh, gonna ask you, man. I was there's this. Let me let me just minimize this, but there's this really cool poster of uh, Fear and Loathing Las Vegas, basically, right? And then um, um, I'm sorry. Can, so how did you meet him? How did you connect with him? Um, I've been a f I've been a fan for a long time, and after driving around one day and just being like, "Fuck it, what if I just reach out to him?" Like, what? Like, because I was thinking of like, how do I like get that look? You know how it is when you're like, "How do I get that look? How do I cheat it? How do I pull it off? How do I make it?" And then it's just like, "Wait a minute, no way." <laughs> what if start at the top? What if I just look up like RalphSteadman.com and just like yeah, so. Um, so I submitted something through his website and he's got like a gallery site. There it is. Yeah, this is That's like him. just some of his iconic and stuff with uh, uh, Gonzo. Exactly. Man. But anyways, That's go ahead, right. John. And so, um, and so I, uh, I, sub I submitted a query through his website and, uh, you know, he, he like sells like prints and stuff and, and he's done some recent things, but he's interesting because he never sells originals of his art, you know, which is pretty interesting considering you know that's just gonna pile up that's all i'm saying like yeah. what, of course you are a lot of shit up, man. that's awesome isn't that crazy you just don't sell your <laughs> fucking originals like no, just you wrap know, your let mind me just say right me, quick dude. john normally normally i'd be a little offended you know that you didn't come to me to to do the you know the cover art right. for you or something like that but dude right. 
no worries on this one. <laughs> this, this is some high class, uh, high level, just um, pedigree OG um, stuff yeah, that I'm not dude. even gonna. That's and you awesome, gotta, bro. you gotta keep it going, Much man. The last one you on had, Shepard Fairy, and this one, I mean, you got, you got to have another uh, exactly, famous artist dude. too, man. So yeah. kudos to that, man. Yeah. Well, done. yeah. Well, something I learned is that, like, in the end, it's it's like the thing you got on your wall. You know, it's like it's like it's all gonna come and go. People, are gonna, you know, it's just like so. It's like making a piece of art, and that's kind of my philosophy about like making movies, really. But it's like, you know, it's uh, when I when I heard back, I was very surprised. But you know, his daughter sort of maintains his his affairs, <clears throat> and so she. Um, and so she uh, deals with like you know he has like uh, stuff up in galleries and stuff at, at any given time. And so any uh, idea how he's got he like shoe deals, dude. Like he's got fucking, I think he's like eighty four or something. I want to say eighty yeah. three. Yeah, like I was fortunate that it, any of it even like happened. But it was um, but I, it, this is like summer now, right? So like I spent yeah I spent most of last summer going back and forth with her figuring it out negotiating and just because you know they're they're in like Wales, so it's just like you send an email, you wait till the next day you know, and if they didn't get their response, you gotta like wait the day after that so it's just like it's so not what we're used Wales, to Wales um, Scotland but I was happy that they were so Wales like, UK? all the way out there dude yeah like I don't even know what country that's part of anymore after fucking you know uh, yeah Brexit. Brexit. So <laughs> I was like, they must have opinions. Dude, Jesus, man, I, I saw, I saw this. So, uh, just, um, let's get back to the movie but real quick. I just wanted to bring this is one of my yeah. favorite pieces of art, man. Like honestly, like this is this, yeah, one, like, yeah, uh, same. this whole one that he did with uh, uh you, know, you know, the Fear and Loathing Las Vegas. I mean, that whole series just, just I feel like it just represents same. the chaos in um Gonzo's uh, in Hunter S. Thompson's yeah. brain like so much, man, and. You exactly. know, to, to me, and, you can see yeah, like was, artists like David Cho, like they're totally like um, inspired by guys like this. You, you know what I mean? It's just like I, I don't know how to yeah. describe it, man. But it's just like a super legit artist, man. But uh, but anyways, that yeah, back to it's the movie. Slightly psychedelic. Yeah. It, it definitely it's a psychedelic, psychedelic, man. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Anyway, so back to the NRA. You know, he was making Sorry. like. Okay. Okay. Back to the NRA. Yeah, <laughs> yes, but, uh, so, um, but you know something about the art i'll help you say um something about that art because it's this crazy image of a gun going off and like what i liked about it was that it was um it's like he's saying howdy and then you're already shot and that's sort of the thing about guns that like people totally forget from movies is that like in movies somebody pulls out a gun and then it's like a bunch of editing between people's line, eyes and they're like okay well now we're going to negotiate or something and, and now it's going to be like a whole scene and a monologue or some shit and it's like what if you're just already shot what if that already happened in all this time and it's like oh so what if it's going to be oh and so that's why i even added like another bullet like right in the title because it's not really about like the art of gunplay as fun as that is in movies it's about like ow that could have already like hurt someone that like you know i mean shit some girl in you know died just on hollywood boulevard just like a, a last weekend or something over yeah, you know some guy it. in a stray bullet i mean you can see this video on social media and it's so kind of you know though. the idea that like it's that easy over someone who's you know heated is just like how is this still happening but dude you know what man i, I gotta tell you man like when whole covid hit basically <laughs> like the pandemic hit and what did americans reach for Toilet paper and guns, bro. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, that's, dude. That's, that's what the we lines, dude. That was <laughs> that's those what real. It's crazy because I feel like, uh, I mean, I had my, I had friends who are like not gun enthusiasts at all start talking about needing to get a gun, man. I, I, you know, <clears throat> you, Which you know what I mean. Makes me want to get a gun. Exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean. So. Absolutely. Yeah, so well, to me, like the whole pandemic just yeah. kind of really showcased like how brittle our society is. Like at any moment, the toilet paper is going to be out, and people are going to like need to protect themselves with fucking firearms. <laughs> you know? Okay, hold on, a second, hold on. A second. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna sidetrack everything for just a second here because um, I want to get into something very important um, uh, first, as as soon as possible. Basically, um, John, what is something that um, street artists can like what are something they can do like what kind of messages that they can do as far as like uh local elections or something like that for november coming up because um you know a lot of street artists like to try to put a message out there that's going to help 
you know, um, people understand and everything. Um, but when it comes to actually accomplishing something with what they're putting up, um, you know, uh, we'd all, we would love to know if there's something that we can do that uh, is going to help us in a local way. Yeah, no, is there that's any, a great uh, question, anyone? actually. Um, absolutely. You know, uh, one thing in particular, because, you know, there's so many different states in play, and, and that's kind of how the whole political puzzle works, is everyone doing something locally. Um, you know, if someone were to put up in certain, like, you know, uh, Republican senator states exactly how much money they took from the NRA over time, or how many, uh, you know, specifically who voted against, you know, the uh, Man Munchen to me bill which was you know pretty lukewarm stuff but the nra derailed it just over you know fear mongering that it's going to create a list of uh of people to be able to take their guns away when this mansion to me amendment actually had a bill a, a little uh, uh regulation in it specifically making a law against making a list of gun owners punishable by like two years in prison and the nra is still gonna lie about it so it's just like you know it's so the name crazy of this amendment? how much they're going to amp people up the uh, Munchen to me. And so if you're able to uh, let people know how much uh, their own senator or local officials are bought off by it, because the Senate's a real problem in particular, because there is stuff in the House that will get through. And so it's just like, why doesn't yeah. anything happen? It's just like, well, things have been happening, but there's like ultimately comes down to, in the end, just a little a big keyhole sort of thing, you know, eventually. And that's where like a lot of the basic shit starts to get through. And so that's, you know, what people think like, oh, both parties are the same. It's like, no, there's a real stalemate. And it's just like, you need a few more like fucking straws of hay or bales of hay to make them uh, crash. So yeah. the, um, the, whole, uh, the whole approach to putting up something locally, I think would really help honestly so um and you know here it's like you know our senators are fucking kamala harris and diane feinstein they're like the angriest like people there are there is on like you know against okay the so then say so say you're a local street like, artist here we're in gonna LA. keep doing the stuff here yeah say you're a local street right. artist here in la um what kind of message would be uh you know a good message to put out about who you know Honestly, Moms Demand is doing a lot of great work because they uh, support putting up stuff uh, as putting up uh, um, candidates across the country, you know, and, you know, female candidates are big against guns because they recognize the impact on families. So um, I think, you know, frankly, just reminding people, I, I it means a lot to me to keep uh, uh, memorializing victims and you know it was just the anniversary the anniversary of El Paso uh, and uh, you know the idea that you know lives just get lost and, and we're losing so many right now with COVID that you know, you know every little bit of art or, or uh, remembrance just to show that you cared about that person I think really goes kind of far so um, if it's not as well as bring to attention you, to you know, why they you know, died and everything, uh, right? a lot of stories yeah, absolutely. Because it's, I mean, it, it's so needless for a lot of these things. And so, you know, it, it can be personal, but there's, you know, there's also, you know, I work in, in advocacy. And so, you know, we work around trying to reform medical malpractice laws, for instance. And so we're always looking for someone who's like, and this specific detail of law screwed me in this many ways. So yeah, if you're good and you can find, you know, one specific person who, who represents like, you know, multi-level, you know, failures of both like, let's say domestic violence, you know, someone who should be getting a gun, you know, a certain kind of firearm that, you know, we don't really need, uh, including, uh, you know, magazines, you know, all of these kinds of things, you know, then yeah. It's, it's, it's a big deal but you know there's there's certain basic things that people want and have wanted for a long time that just you know the nra uh tries to avoid which is uh you know it, and it really comes down to their own money and that's really the sad part you, you really think there's something about guns in it but their own you know one of their own fundraisers quit after like 10 years saying like you know if i just thought like if the average nra donor knew how we spent money they would never give us money anymore so, so there's and a so, thing going on and, here and that's what this right? guy says dude he was a whistleblower yeah it's like an nra whistleblower guy who's like a young idealistic gun nut like he loves guns just like you love street art like he just wants to talk about them and just like look at them and talk about old guns and all that shit and so he was so disillusioned after seeing like how extravagantly these guys live and how much they set up side entities to pay themselves off and their friends and so so there's a few you know, things basically going on right you know, now right basically on one hole. hand 
on one hand, we're talking about like gun violence and these groups that basically, you know, kind of like advocate basically for, I guess, gun safety, basically. And then there's also the second part that they're mm -hmm. using an NRA as kind of like a funnel for basically campaign money, right? So there's kind of like two, two issues right. that you're addressing inside this one movie, basically, right? Right. Exactly. And then the and then Russia comes along with like one of their oldest cons, which is to, you know, create like a, a, a fake organization that doesn't look like it has anything to do with the official state to try to create back channels to influence, uh, you know, somebody they normally wouldn't be able to have a direct conversation with. And so, you know, we're in America, we're not used to this stuff. So that's why it blows us away. And you go through it, but it's like, it's just like, this is such an old Soviet operation. It just goes back and they're doing it all around over the world. And so it just happens in this case, you know, they happen to get really far in their influence. And uh, they also happen to possibly be at the scene of putting up to $20 million or more illegally of Russian money into the NRA to coordinate with this campaign to uh, like help them win the election in 2016. So, um, so it, it's, it's like layers of corruption so that when someone else comes on who's even more corrupt than all you were before, like it's just like, you know, riding an escalator. Have you seen yeah. the reports that basically like, um, I don't know where I saw this man, but like uh, Black Lives Matter is infiltrated by like Russia and they're like setting up like certain kind of like protests against like other, uh, you, you know, anti, I mean like, you know, pro-Trump kind of guys like asking them to clash like we heard those in the news basically right how do you feel about that because oh yeah like in 2016 yeah well that probably involves facebook for one i mean i think wasn't there a guy who like some guy who just punked all these people to say that they were gonna like they're gonna burn a flag in gettysburg at the gettysburg battlefield and all these like angry trumpers showed up with like you know water ready to like fight it the guy doesn't even live anywhere near there like, like he did this like a bunch of places and so like they and they just showed up and it's like it's foolish but it's also like Ugh, wow we're really coming in <laughs> we're looking looking the beast in the eye here aren't we geez they're really looking for it and, you know yeah, I mean, no, it's just, there's just so much misinformation going on like sometimes yeah. i'm just like dude I, don't, I really to be honest it's like you want to kind of support the right group you know what i mean and then it's just there's there's yeah. so many different layers well, here's of the thing black lives matter was started by three young black ladies okay yeah and yeah there, they there, had there's a, an actual like thing yeah, and it's much smaller they, than they everybody saying. Well, and and it, it developed into the thing. Yes. And so then, yes. anytime you have that, you're going to have someone trying to take advantage of it and run with it, and you know. Yeah. No, it's a. It's and they're like, primarily local. I think they primarily focus on local stuff. I know they got like national attention, but there's plenty of stuff in LA, even though people think of it as a liberal place. Well, there's there's a Black Lives Matter LA, yes, exactly. and then there's That's a Black the Lives so. Matter like international. Yeah, right. man. I think at the end of the day, right. exactly. At the exactly. end of the day, there's so, just so many different yeah. groups right, right now trying to kind of get the attention of the media. You know, what I mean, right? Well, yeah. my, my point that, is though, when you have something like this, like Black Lives Matter, it's a small company with that's not doesn't have a a big organization right. that knows how to fact. You know, I mean, not fact check, but um, you know, balance checks and and making sure that they're right. you know they're not being infiltrated or taken advantage of by yeah. like a you know, a network exactly. of, of other people and stuff like that. So, you know, they're going to get taken advantage of at some point. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. It's like, what's the there there, you know, in any of these groups? Anything that becomes a hashtag is already like sort of spilling for over in subjectivity. So, uh, yeah. But the... Um, they become a target. But as basically. far as these kinds of... As far as these kind of like people infiltrating or something, that sounds like such a Russian story. And I know it sounds like you know, daunting or, or scary to hear like Russian talking points. But I mean, they really are like almost like a kid talking back to you kind of Russian points. Like, no, you're infiltrating with Russians, you know? I mean, it's like, <laughs> but said so seriously, like, did you just say that? Like, and I mean, there's so, I mean, it, it's crazy to go through some of the stuff. That, I mean, how they denied knowing anything about uh, Maria Butna and at the same time, decrying her as a political prisoner being persecuted and saying that she has to be released and saying that this reeks of McCarthyism. And so it's just so like, you know, I mean, 
there's so many people who can like take you through this because they're, you know, they, they, they do this for a living and, and now their living is very, even more busy. So, you know, getting the, the story on isn't so hard, but it is interesting in this case because she and uh, her handler Torsion took so many pictures of themselves over these years while they were building up their credentials and getting themselves ingratiated to the NRA and then using the NRA to come over to conventions and then using the NRA to go to conventions that had nothing to do with guns, just conservatives, just to meet other Republicans and to the point where Torshin had a meeting with Trump uh, that was set at the National Prayer Breakfast in 2017 that got scrubbed at the last minute because uh, someone at Trump's staff noticed that on his itinerary that he was about to meet with a Russian gangster the next day of National <laughs> Prayer Breakfast. And so like it Not becomes started like, what is going on here? No. And again, this is like, this isn't like secret, you know? And so the fact that like, you know, the Spanish... Uh, intelligence tried to arrest Torshin uh, for and uh, had him on tapes uh, being referred to as the Godfather by uh, Russian mobsters for directing a money laundering scheme with Spanish properties. And then the fact that somebody tipped him off so that he avoided showing up to the sting where they were waiting for him at the airport, you know, he still showed up at the NRA conventions while he's a wanted international criminal, you know? I mean, that's pretty crazy to me that the NRA is just like, oh, do, 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 do. It's just like, I, you know, so it's like the FBI is following him. So it's like all these things, you know, were so carefully documented by, yes, the, you know, the federal authorities were surveilling them, but also themselves so that, you know, I'm, I'm good at researching, but I got to go back and check a lot. So like, you know, the fact that they're so thoroughly documented was pretty important because I could keep going back and also find better resolution photos because there's so much of that that I'm like, oh, no, that's a much better picture of them, you know? And so, yeah, I get pretty sick of, like, looking at them, you know, through all this time with the same fake smiles at all these events, you know? But I'm like, at the same time, it's like, it's like you're being at a buffet, and I'm like, I'm, I can just keep eating. I can just keep taking some, right? Yeah, well, I'll just keep taking. I'll, you know, I'll just, I, because, I, because I, I, I can't. Oh wait, no, this one has better lighting. Yeah, this oh, one yeah, yeah. has better lighting. I like this one better. Oh yeah, it's. I mean, it's just like, and I tried to just use them all because, like, they don't care. And also, so this been, guy. So, and that's another thing is that I've learned so much about. Yeah, go ahead. This guy, Alexander Wolf. Torshin. I'm just gonna bring him up, Torshin. so we we kind of uh, <clears throat> He worked with that's this him. lady. Um. Maria, yeah. Maria Butina, basically, right? Yep. And what you're saying is that That's they right. infiltrated the, or he, <laughs> basically she infiltrated the NRA right. for him. And this guy is basically, uh, he had involvement in the Tagas Skaya gang. Yeah, basically. yeah. <coughs> now you're good. Okay. And then so basically. Yeah, that's, a, that's a big gang. And, and that has ties to Putin too, but like, I don't okay. to get into that. So it's like but the KGB yeah. so, kind of um, like relic kind of stuff. Yeah. Basically. Well, in Russia, this isn't this isn't grandiose. This is reality. Like in Russia, like like the oligarchs, the mafia, and the state sort of work sort of freely <laughs> together, you know, in this sort of sphere of influence. Yeah, like of I think Americans in, in like a lot of can't... ways, this allows the state to not have their fingerprints on it. Yeah, I think. But like, this is uh... a continuation of old Russia. These are old czars and stuff. You know, that's how these things continue. And people don't understand, man, even in the U.S., like, uh, you know, like I said, it wasn't that too long ago that CIA was making deal with mobs and uh, other, other gangs to, like, pull oh, off no, shit exactly. internationally. Exactly, man. exactly. Oh, yeah, exactly. Well, how exactly. much Trump wanting a right. cut of, exactly. uh, of TikTok? I mean, what, what kind of gangster shit is that? <laughs> yeah, let's talk, let's talk about that the Chinese so for a second. That is so typical, I, like, fucking mobster, dude. Oh, Jesus. You yeah. know what? It's kind of oh, interesting, though. Let's talk about the... No, you can't fucking do that, dude. <laughs> and we want to cut. All right? I just think it's kind of interesting because, like... more mobster than that. Right now, no. t to me, I think that the Chinese is, like... They're similar to the Russians, but they don't have necessarily, like, the gangster element as a separate element. Their gangster element is within the Communist Party, it kind of seems. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? They, they basically, yeah, you know, you know they, they'll, they'll just lock up the Uyghurs and, like, uh, you, you know, to, to be honest, if you don't know about that, like, look it up. I mean. No, they're gangsters. Oh, oh, yeah. Exactly they're, they're, right. they're, they're, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, that's right. Yeah. You know, and. Yeah, and exactly. As, no, I as, think, you know, yeah. As an American, it's, it's very difficult to understand that, like, their governments are, like, crucially involved in their day-to-day -day lives so much because we have, like, such a – we actually – believe it or not, we actually have a lot of privacy compared to other, you know, Russian and Chinese people. Like, oh, it, yeah. 
you know people don't understand that so it's like oh yeah like, dude oh you have no idea they think you can just oh yeah they live in like such a bubble in china dude there's so i mean like google like stuff gets deleted like the next day that people post and so like you know they have to they they stay up late for like a blogger to see it before the the censors can delete it and shit like yeah i'm in the, in the way, i got, there, I got a question for you These motherfuckers don't know you. playing I, cosplay dude <laughs> yeah i got a, i got a question for you john so um, you know, we haven't seen Kim Jong Un in a long time. Oh, you know, yeah. like a live, a live yeah. picture That's or right. a video or anything like that. When was the last time you saw anything like that? So ah, that's a good point. I saw I saw an interview where this lady is talking about how he's already dead. He's dead now, and it's his sister and one of the commanders that are running things right now. Wow. And the only thing yeah, that you're seeing well, you know. is videos from the past that they have uh -huh. visually um, altered. Uh-huh. So if you, if That's great. you wow. can find That's amazing, anything dude. about Jesus. Kim Jong-un being alive, I'd love to see it because I don't think he's you know, alive. You know, we should have, we should ask Burn. He's back there right now, Burn 1. He was just in L.A. and he's back in uh, South Korea right now. He's Be in careful. quarantine because he was in a dangerous country. He was in a they'll, dangerous they'll country, know. our country. So, yeah. So, I know, but, right? uh, but yeah, and but so he would know. Well, he would know what the word is on the street. You know. Well, I mean, they're, they're big on it. dude, when all this shit was popping, I know. I just got to give you an I, to give you an idea. His mom, because he's from Korea, he's a street artist, and yeah. um, he's in he, he's in Korea. His mom called him up at the May. While well, all this shit was popping up, we got riots, we got COVID, we got fucking you know Trump melted down. His mom called him up in Korea and said, come home, come back here to the U.S. I'm worried about you there in Korea because it's getting so dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's, that's, that's interesting. Get out of the dude. States. It's too <laughs> dangerous. Come back home like they, to Korea. They're fucking at it. Like, they're not fucking around, dude. Oh, dude. Yeah. No, shoot. No, no, no. Come from Korea back to L.A. because the standoff between <clears throat> North and South, like, just a month or two oh, ago. Oh, okay. So no, 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 no. I see what you're like, no, We've lived but through that. But exactly. you know what? One thing That's what I'm saying, dude. Even with all the chaos in our city, dude, it's crazy. Dude, though. It what, like, one thing they did handle be better, free, though, no. is COVID <laughs> than Americans, though. That's for sure. I think the amount yeah, of like deaths. It is. It's fine, right? Yeah, I mean, like I said, everybody just wore masks. I mean, they, they're still wearing masks, but uh, I think their death count is a lot smaller. But at the end of the day, Korea is like a, a lot smaller place. But I don't know if this is the newest news, guys. I mean. They, uh, again, this is just like some stuff to kind of like scare people, but basically they said that North Korea now has like mini nukes that they can, uh, put on, uh, you know, intercontinental missiles, man. He, I, you know, I don't even know what that means. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, but, uh, don't worry, we'll take you down with our space force. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. But the end day, man, and, um, I think, I think it's just, it wouldn't surprise me, but here's my question. Who's going to be pushing the button? Is it Kim? Is it his sister or that commander? <laughs> That's true. Uh, that's I don't true. even know, dude. That's a good question. Will it work? That's my question. But, no! you know, um, that's a good question. But I'm just saying, dude, they don't have, like, a freaking, like, even Elon Musk can make this shit work, dude. And he's, like, like he needs to chill. He needs to chill yeah, out. Dude. He's getting a little, little bit too much of God sometimes. complex going on there. It's Dude, it's yeah, that old. guy, man. Yeah. Boy. Oh, you know what? I... I've, I've been wanting to talk about this for, um, for a long time. I keep forgetting to mention this. Um, not long ago, I saw a follow-up on that um, uh, Covington High School uh, kid. What was his name? Uh, Red, uh, Sandman? Um, uh, Mark Sandman? I, I don't want to know his name, but I'm curious. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. So I'm cursed with so memory. You Boy, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you know, like Julian so, Sandman or something. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember exactly when that was, like a year yeah, ago. Yeah, basically, or more. what happened? I mean, what happened was that uh, CNN. It was the weekend of the women's march, remember? And then basically, there was a bunch of people, and then uh, this kid was—he uh, was kind of like talked about by the media as like this guy who loved Trump because he was made, wearing a "Make America Great Again" hat, and they kind of framed it in this uh, uh, thing where he was kind of like chanting on the steps against like this. Uh, uh native american guy you know what i mean so they framed it like oh this guy's like a kind of like a hitler youth kind of thing anyways what was the uh yeah, I, what was the update yeah, I, well i thought that you know when i first saw that and i watched the video 
man, I got so pissed off. I was like, man, if that was my kid, I would actually, I might actually smack him in the face. Just not, not, you know, hard or anything, but that just, to, just because like, what the hell are you doing disrespecting <laughs> an Indian like that? You know what I mean? But then when you see that, man, that kid did not approach that Indian. That Indian came up to that kid, almost like, you know, taunting the kid, really. And all that kid did was just stand his ground. All he, he did just was just there. smile. Mm. The thing he is, just, like, he has know, a really, like, he yeah. has a really, like. Well, he can't help yeah. what he's, what, I mean, all that attention yeah. focused on him right there. He doesn't know what he's, he's looking like or doing anything. Like, he's a young kid, right? So, um, so there, he, he put out uh, lawsuits to, I think it was either seven or eight different media outlets and he just settled with the washington post uh for 250 million yeah no he, he had a loss i don't he, no, no, no. he didn't get did he settle he, he sued i don't think yeah he didn't get right that's right no 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 the suit was for 250 million but he just settled right. with them which means that dude just got right i mean for a something huge chunk, a massive chunk of that money and that's only one that's only one of the outlets okay um so my my concern here is well, I hate this you know, guy's face, Tucker Carlson. Fuck this guy. Oh He's yeah, Christ, I mean, it looks like it looks like a <laughs> neck vomited face. You know what I mean? Um, the point is, I think sometimes the media they get a hold of something, and then all of a sudden they're just there's a media storm, and everybody piles on. You, you know what I mean? Wait, let me finish. Well, so, I'll so, tell you. Wait, people oh, think sorry, people think that this is that this is a good happy ending for the kid. You know what I mean? He just got a large settlement, and that's just from one. He's going to get more money. He's going to get millions and millions of dollars from this, right? Dude, that's going to fuck this kid up even more. You know, <laughs> like all of his friends are going to know. You know, I, I don't know what his name was. Um, what was it, Mark Sandman or, or whatever? Nick, Sandman. Nick. Nicholas, Nicholas, Nick. Nick. Yeah, Nick's got the money, man. Let's go hang out at Nick's place. Let's party at Nick's house, man. You know? Man. And, like, you got to be careful with this kid because his life, like, the rest of his life could be fucked up just because of this this one thing and getting all this money from it. Okay? Yeah. I don't, I don't disagree with money being, being taken sufferable. from – I don't, I don't mind money being taken from the news organizations, but to, to give a huge settlement to that, to only to that kid – it should be spread out to, you know, other organizations or something. I, don't, I couldn't tell you exactly what that would be, but you're just, you're setting that kid up, man. You're setting that kid up and all the, all the people around him, all of his friends and everything, it's going to fuck shit up for the future to come. That's, yeah, that's my opinion. That's definitely, uh, I, I've never really thought. Future too. Yeah. yeah. I've never really thought about the, uh, yeah. the kid, but I mean, I'm not feeling that sorry for him because he's getting a shit ton of money. You know what I mean? But I sure uh, don't, but yeah. Um, <laughs> I, you know, but the problem is, is that, you know, this boiled over on social media. So the, uh, the news is um, in, uh, increasing reliance on whatever the fuck people are talking about on Twitter or social media that is, seems like gets them hot. They'll just be able to take it and report on it as if it's news and it's not. <laughs> and it somehow news went from like, you know, here's the news and here's people watching and you're like talking to each other. And then it came to the news being like, hey, what are you guys talking about? Let's cover this. You know, like, yeah, you know? I mean, it's like, that's yep. not really what, you know, They're I mean, what about what that was, was newsworthy? Because, and so they, they, they were reporting on the idea that people on Twitter were like, yo, what the fuck? And, and when you get a video like that, because I saw it that weekend, uh, you don't get the full context and you're looking for it. But so many people are angry tweeting about it or whatever that you're like, whatever. And by the end, Covington is like trending the next day or whatever. And they're embarrassed. And so um, the media reported on something without even knowing what the fuck it was. Cause they should, and they should have been because there was no story. They didn't have any of their own damn reporters there. And they're always like mooching off other people's social media to count and substitute is on the ground reporting. And you see it all the time in Twitter. Like, Hey, I'm a producer from ABC news. Can we use this? Hey, I'm a producer from good morning America. Can we use this? Hey, I'm a producer from news. Yeah, so, um, so that's why it ends up being, you know, so, such a joke and such a bubble and so hard to to try to to, to penetrate this shit. I got, a, really, I got an idea you know, for you, John. Kid, wait, 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 John, like, what do you think of this? I like like I don't even know what they said about him. <laughs> what do you think of this, John? I have an idea, okay, to try to fix um the, the situation with the media. Okay. I think it, I dude. think that that the that it this all started going downhill when we went into a twenty four hour news cycle. I think yeah, that that's we should not be allowed to have a 24-hour news cycle. I think that we should only 
be allowed to have certain number of hours of news coverage each day. Well, you know, I'll tell you what, and here's the real problem, and it speaks to what you're talking about, because the, what this constant news cycle did be, became, um, every day becomes like a political game, right? To win and fight over the headlines. And it becomes so myopic, just to get to that day, that week, and whatever, and the elections was always hanging, just like the World Series or whatever the fuck. And so now you see that Jared Kushner was literally, you know, gaming the outbreak of covid by saying like oh it's breaking out more in the blue states let's not respond let's make it a governor's problem so that their governor they blame their governors and so as it began to grow and, and decimate a lot of the people who would actually be trump voters um who now won't trust the mail system either with their vote um you know the uh, that that wisdom has really faded but the idea that Somebody's first, even if he's a, you know, a corrupt rich kid, you know, the idea that like you're going to see uh, a deadly outbreak that's gone through the world and still see it through a political lens of how that state went in an election at any given time. So, and also to not realize that like, yeah, they're blue, so those blue states tend to have big cities. And so those are the places that are having outbreaks. And so genius, it doesn't really have to do about a blue state thing. It's a fucking disease it's going to go through. And so, you know, now we've got students like going back to school today, you know, and like not wearing a mask and thinking it's okay. And now that we know that there's actual heart problems, lasting heart problems, and like half the people who are former COVID patients, the ones that survive, you know, I mean, this is going to be a generation more of serious health problems and costs that we're doing just under, you know, I mean, you know, it's sad that we've got Republican governors that care more about getting Trump's approval, fleeting approval, and he'll turn on them in a heartbeat. Yeah. Versus their, you know, the lives of children that they are, you know, elected to protect. I mean, it's the, yeah. it's, it's the kids in their own states and their own purview. And so that's what's so sad. To, to me, it's really John, interesting. John, I got a, uh, I got a, a mug here that, um, that I've basically, my, my, uh, uh -huh. when I've come to, to be at this point, uh, for those of you who right, are just good. listening, my mug is, uh, it says, be your own president. Um, just the way nice. it has to be these days, you know what I mean? Yeah, because, you, yeah. you know what, I mean, at oh, the end shit, of the day, man, dude, yeah. I don't think the, uh, let's be honest, man. You're I mean, on your own. You're on your own, dude. Have, you know what you're uh, talking about? More with, and more. Uh, Kushner? Kushner, it was his job to set up the, who got him, um, to set up the masks. I mean, the testing. It was his job to oh, step the yeah. testing. And yeah, so yeah. then. Oh, yeah. The test. Hell, yeah. Why is it And, and all of a sudden, job, like you were right. saying, John, yeah. Yeah, you're he found right. out somebody told him, you know, he got all the, this information together and everything ready to, to get going on it and all that. And they're like, oh, wait a second. Wait a second, uh, Jared. Before we go going on nilly on the, you know, we think it's going to, it's not going to be so bad. And the, the, the places are getting hit bad anyway, the Democrats. So. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So whatever yeah. happened to that, like, Jared Kushner? Huh? Whatever happened to your Jesus. job that you you were supposed to do? The one fucking thing. What else are you doing? The one fucking thing He's, that you could yeah. really do that you could really do right. to help America, Jared Kushner, was to do what you're supposed to do. And what the fuck did you do? Right. He looted the you know the personal savings programs. You know the small business savings loans. You know. All these fucking companies are getting, you know, looted out that don't fucking deserve it. And that's pay to play. That's like the definition of pay to play, by the way. So, um, oh, yep, just uh, right just there. as a good note, and maybe closing. Oh, oh, this is a good note for closing because I know that we're probably wrapping up. But uh, pay to play, by the way, just to tell you how relevant this movie Shit, is. Man, where are you now? This up. is what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Like we can just uh, go yeah. on and so, on and but on. But this, this is good, dude. So, okay, so the opening of pay to play starts with uh, a guy who says uh he's like this like, total like straight from central casting guy who's like uh uh we, we ask him he's a lobbyist he's like pay to play is a quid pro quo simple as that you know it's a reward and something like that and so that guy <laughs> no joke just got arrested for pay to play this past week in the biggest financial scandal in like ohio modern ohio history and i made two history two documentaries about political scandals in Ohio and like this just dwarfed it with like $60 million going from first energy to Larry Householder who's the, uh, the, you did one about coin gate, right? the house of the Republican. So yeah, that's right. That's where it all started in CoinGate. That's right. And so, um, this already blows that out of the water. And so 
the idea that so much money went to uh, one guy. And again, you know, you, you talk about how, um, you know, like, the, you know, they think they can try to pull this off or like, oh, Republicans think like, oh, as long as it's happening, Democrats, it's okay. You know, Larry Householder forced this thing through the house that raised uh, utility rates for everyone in Ohio. Everybody got screwed by that shit by, you know, over at the best of a couple lobbyists from First Energy. And now everybody's fucking screwed. And so this guy's, you know, been arrested. And uh, the uh, lobbyist that opened our film, I don't even know how we got the fucking interview with him. That's the thing, dude. You go back and you're like, people are like, whoa, how'd you get an interview with the guy? And you're like, you're not from that state. You don't realize that. Like, everyone's like, he's a fucking mobster, dude. Why are you tired? He's talking to you for it. And you're like, I don't know, dude. So, like, that's the beauty of these things is it keeps coming back relevant or something. But the guy who defines pay to play literally just got arrested for pay to play. And, and like they even said the definition of it, even re, like the, the, uh, the guy who read the arrest, like said, like, this was quid quo, this was quid quo pro, this was pay to play. Like he's the same definition that the dude gave us, <laughs> man. Yeah. So, uh, but as Ohio goes, dude, as Ohio goes, I'm telling you, that's dude, crazy, bro. Scary. So, well, dude, thank you so much I, because i appreciate all the information you so much. We appreciate all the information um let's uh let's get up on um the uh the wall that lady's wall um oh, let's yeah. get that and let me just let out. me just plug my stuff yeah my yeah. um yeah and so my uh i'm still uh i am a fundraising proficient in barrel and uh so if uh, somebody who watches this who's a real art collector and actually wants their name on that poster and wants to be a producer you know where to reach me on social media my uh my contacts are right there and my gofundme is right there so um and we just got fiscal sponsorship so we got a non-profit donation so it's a write-off so um we will be selling the posters but we just got to finish the movie first and we'll and of course we'll put them all over la but that's a given so uh, <laughs> but that's why we're here so let me know again. i'll be ready bro all right thanks for having me guys good to see you guys Love that, man. And hey, man, I can't wait when this shit is all over, man. We can hang out in person. Hey, John, you got to you got to promise us that you're going to come out to uh, our sticker meetup and, uh, uh, you, you know, give us a few of those originals, basically, man, because. Uh, yeah, dude. Hell yeah, know, man. I can't wait. We're all due for a party when this shit fucking, you know, whenever, whenever we get our shit together, man. You know what I mean? Whenever yeah. we're allowed to. Hell yeah, yeah man. But, doing, man. But thank you so much again, John. And uh, like I said, man, always a pleasure to have you on. Right. And uh, we got to have you on again to talk a little bit more about when the election comes up, man, to give our audience oh, a bit, Jesus. Uh, okay. you know, more, more information. Because yeah. I, I love the stuff you always bring up, man. I'm like, I got to do two days of research just to come back and talk to John again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I just, I just yeah, learned about it's a wealth of information. <laughs> All right, I'm yeah. gonna go do my CoinGate Wikipedia study right now, man. So. Oh, that's a good one, dude. That's a good one. <laughs> well, yeah, man. That's Thank a good one. I can even. And well, also you know, check one out last thing. Right. one last thing. Um, this is uh, for this, this is for those of you who um, <clears throat> who you know are followers and uh, know about the uh, issue that we had with um, with the other podcast that was going to use the same name. Um, we have resolved that issue. And um, the reason why I bring that up is because, uh, John, you were actually part of helping that to kind of, you know, be figured out a little bit because, um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll go over that a little bit more. But, yeah, but um, yeah, <laughs> I'm glad the end it's resolved. It's I'm resolved. Really glad. Yeah, and I think at the end of the day, what's great is we all never forget what you come from. That's where the, uh, the moral of the story is. And, uh, you, you know, it's yeah, always yeah. better to have more friends than enemies. I think, like... Let's just leave the audience well at that, man. You, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look forward to updating you guys on, on that. And, uh, and like know. again, John, we'll, we'll uh, kick it with you soon in person, all right? All right, thanks. Again, thanks, man. bro. Hell yeah, man. Be to safe. the audience, love you guys. Take care and peace. Peace.